I'm going to be comparing the Sonic franchise to the Garfield franchise. When you look at the highest Rotten Tomatoes score for each franchise, in the case of Sonic the Hedgehog, the second movie has the highest score of 68%. In the case of Garfield, who man, none of these movies are fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. The highest score is only a 36%. For the Garfield animated movie that came out in 2024. <laughs> and then when you look at the lowest score for each franchise. In the case of Sonic, the lowest score is still 64%. Uh, which is good. In the case of Garfield, the lowest score is only a 12% for Garfield Tale of Two Kitties. <laughs> and then we look at average score. Sonic has an average of 60 of 66 in the case of Garfield, you have an average of 25. Once again, Sonic wins. And then when you look at gap between lowest and highest score, well, you can tell already which franchise is going to win. Because of Sonic, you only have a gap of 4. With Garfield, you have a gap of 24. So Sonic has won every round so far. And for me, this one is not hard to determine at all. It's pretty obvious right away. Yeah, Sonic is the better franchise. First of all, Sonic is nostalgic for me. I used to play Smash Bros. on the Wii and Nintendo Switch, so I remember playing with the character of Sonic, and therefore these movies are a nice reminder of the earlier years of my life. Plus, I got to see Sonic 1 and 2 in theaters, and I had a good experience with both of these movies. I enjoyed them. Are they perfect? No. With the first film, it feels odd that Sonic is on a road trip, that he's in a car throughout a lot of the movie. Considering Sonic is so famous for being a speedster that's incredibly fast. <laughs> then when you look at Sonic 2, I think the movie could have been improved if you either cut out the wedding completely or at least reduce the amount of time we spend there. Because I know every time it cuts to the wedding, I'm just like, filmmakers, can we please get back to Sonic and Tails? That's what I'm more interested in. I want to spend more time with them. And not as much time with this wedding I don't care as much about. Sure, I like seeing this actor that's in SWAT and Criminal Minds. But, I mean, Sonic 2 could have been better, but still definitely enjoyable. And I like the trailer that I've seen for Sonic 3. I like that we're making things bigger by bringing in Shadow and just making the scale and scope larger than it was previously. I also think inherently it's easier to make a good Sonic movie because you have more characters, the scale and scope is inherently not as small as Garfield, the characters are more complex than the ones in Garfield, and Sonic started off in video games, not in comic strips. With Garfield, the premise and concept is pretty simple, straightforward, easy to follow. This all started off actually with comic strips, where you have three four panels and then a punchline some simple setup punchline about a lazy cat that likes eating lasagna even when you look at the old tv show garfield and friends if you look on peacock each episode is 20 to 25 minutes but each of the episodes is split into six minute segments you have three six minute segments and then a few quickies in there the quickies are just like the comic strips it's a really simple one minute setup punchline about a lazy cat that's wanting to sleep or eat. When you actually look at the new Garfield animated movie that came out earlier on this year, don't get me wrong, it's harmless, it's inoffensive, it's not like one of the worst animated movies I've ever seen, but I thought it totally lost all the things that are distinct and unique about Garfield and replaced them with generic stuff we've seen in other movies. You have Garfield dealing with his daddy issues and abandonment issues. I go, that's not what I want to see from Garfield. Inherently with this character, you don't actually want to see Garfield grow or change. You want him to stay who he is. On top of that, you have Garfield going on this whole heist, and it feels right out of Mission Impossible. In fact, you can tell the filmmakers literally know that they're ripping off Mission Impossible because they have Tom Cruise be mentioned in the movie. <laughs> so it's like, oh man, this is just the totally bland and generic take on Garfield that totally sidelines John Arbuckle and the relationship between John and Garfield. It just loses all the things that you remember about the character that 
Garfield is a lazy cat who likes to sleep, eat food, in particular lasagna, drive John crazy, kick Odie off the table, mail the self-proclaimed cutest cat in the world off to Abu Dhabi. All this stuff that's not at all complicated. When you look at the live-action Garfield movie, I haven't seen this one, so I can't comment too much on it, but certainly hasn't gotten good reviews. It feels to me like inherently the simple, straightforward nature of the Garfield character, the premise and concept here, just doesn't really translate as well to a movie. It's harder to actually make a good Garfield movie. It feels like the kind of concept that works better in comic strips or in a TV show where you just have these simple little adventures about a cat that doesn't like to do much. It doesn't like to work. <laughs> he just wants to you know, drive John crazy or get the mailman away. You see in Garfield and Friends, you got a mailman who's scared of Garfield. <laughs> it's all this just simple easy to understand stuff so i would say that i definitely am more excited for the sonic franchise easily you know, sonic is definitely the franchise i prefer and that'll ramp things up for this one